In completing chapter 7, what we have done is we have looked over and reviewed exponentials and logarithmic functions. And specifically, what you guys did spend a lot of time on was working with those logarithmic properties and same with the exponential properties. We need to know those. So using the, the review that we've, we've done in chapter 7 over these two particular functions, what we're going to do now is actually begin the differentiation and integration processes on them. So we're going to have to kind of take it piece by piece, but look at different kind of exponentials, different kind of logarithms, and learn how to differentiate and integrate. So today we're going to just be looking at the exponential base e to some sort of exponent. And the biggest challenge is to be actually um, combining all of these old rules of differentiation and integration um, with these new rules that we're about to look at when we come across a function that is an exponential base e. So like I said, the biggest challenge here is keeping all of these straight. Um, so I do just want to kind of pull you to this slide. On page 290 of your textbooks, you have this information to you. Um, and you'll notice the symbols are a little a little different, but if you ever took the derivative, so d, the derivative of a constant with respect to x, that's what that's saying, I'm trying to derive a constant with respect to x, um, what's going to happen is you're going to get zero. So a lot of these you're going to recognize, these are the basic properties of differentiating. So um, when you differentiate, there's there's all these rules that you kind of have to follow, and we have the proofs that led to them, but really you just need to know how to use them. And at this point, I would like to have you focus on the product, quotient, and chain rule, because that's really what's going to kind of start to mix in with your new differentiation process today. One uh, quick follow-up to touch more detail with one of these. If you looked at the product rule, for example, so you were trying, you had this function like, x times um, the square root of x squared plus 1. Unfortunately, there is no rule that suggests that you can take um, x, derive that, and then take this function and derive that and then multiply those two derivatives together. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, so here, this is the rule that you would have to refer to if you ever have a function times a function, so something like this, what's going to have to be done is you would have to take your first times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of your first times the second left alone. So you can refer to these different rules and formulas. All right, so here are two more rules that we're going to be learning. The first one that I would have you look at is this one right here, and this one's kind of interesting. Um, this is the only kind of function that when you take the derivative of it, it's actually equal to itself. It's the only function where the input at x is equal to c is equal to the rate of change at x is equal to c. All right, I do want to kind of show you over here what exactly that means. This is the, the graph of e to the x. You can see that um, I do have the rounded answers, so I just plugged in negative 1, which would be e to the negative 1 would be 1 over e. So I did type that into my calculator. What you're going to get is approximately 0.368. At 0, you're at 1. If you plug in 1, of course, e to the 1 is just that special number, that approximately 2.718. You can see that here, and so on and so forth. It's very interesting because um, the, the values that you would plug into the derivative equation, if you were to derive this function y is equal to e to the x, the derivative of y would actually just be e to the x. So then, if I asked you, find the, the rate of change at the point 1 comma, um, and then, well, in this case e, it's interesting because the slope of this line, I'm not going to draw the best line, but here we have a tangent line because that's what the derivative is. It's the slope of that tangent line. Um, bad, bad line, once again. But what is happening at that instantaneous point, e at x equals 1, um, if I plug that into this equation, what's going to happen is this slope is actually 2.718, which matches the input of that actual function. That's, once again, this is the only function that does that. If you ever looked at the uh, another function, such as x squared, derived that, once again, what this is is the equation that gives you the slopes at the x values along this, this graph. So if you looked at negative 1, what you're going to be finding here is, well, the y value is equal to 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 
However, if you were trying to find what is the instantaneous rate of change at x equals 1, then you would have to derive, you would find y prime or the derivative to be equal to 2x, and then if you'll notice here, plug in that negative 1 here and you're going to get something that's not the same as the actual input at that value. And that's kind of clear because our slope or our rate of change is clearly not equal to this positive one. Okay, so y equals e to the x is, is a strange function. So going back to this, um, there is an interesting proof on page 512 that's going to serve as an extra credit problem, but please do look over it. Um, what it does is it brings us back to that old long way of the limit approach for finding derivatives or finding the instantaneous rate of change. So, so please do take the time to look that over. The other thing that I want you to look at is this is going to be another thing that we're going to come across and if you ever have an exponential base e to some sort of other function um, what happens is you're going to actually have to use the chain rule on it. So I do want to show you how this is a composition function and remember when we had to derive composition functions we had to use the chain rule. This is the example that I have of this. Um, the example y equals e to the 2x. The composition function here would be f of x. The outer function would be e to the x. The inner function is going to be g of x would be equal to 2x. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this function g of x and plugging it into our f function. So here we have it. There's our composition function and it's like you would be taking our g of x to times x and plugging it in for this x of our f function. So we would get e to the 2x. Alright, so what's going to have to happen is the chain rule. We would be deriving this outer function but leaving the exponent alone. So when you derive this outer function um, of an exponential base e, as you can see over here, e to the u would just be e to the u. So then though we need to multiply by the inner function's derivative and that's where you're going to see for this particular one y prime would be equal to, I'm going to derive the overall function um, but this is my inner function so I am going to have to derive that and here is what we're going to get and we'll do some practice problems of these. Alright, so I am going to do number one with you and what it is is it's find the slope of the tangent at the point 0 comma 1. So they actually have a, a picture for you but I'm not going to draw that, you can refer to that in your book. So here is the equation that they gave us or one of them. We have y is equal to e to the 3x. So this is one of those things where you see I don't simply have e to the x so unfortunately I can't say well the derivative with respect to x is going to be just e to the 3x. What this is going to be is we're going to have to say I have an e to the u here, alright, and then so in order, or y is equal to e to the u, and so in order to derive e to the u, what we're going to have to use is that chain rule. Uh, we're going to have to use that right there. So this is saying that if you're going to be taking e to the u and deriving it, you're going to have to do the outer function, which is the e to the u function, and then multiplying it by the inner function there. So here we have it. We're going to have to take e to the u times du dx, and what our inner function is going to be observed as is 3x, and so what is the derivative? with respect to x, well it's just going to be 3, so our y prime is equal to e to the 3x times, and then here's my dux, du with respect to x, so in other words 3e to the 3x. So you're not quite done because what you do need to go ahead and do is find out this is the general slope along this graph um, at certain x values. So if you want to find an actual x value slope, then you're going to have to plug this in. So I'm going to plug in, I think this would be better. I'm going to relabel this y prime as f prime of 0, and then therefore it's indicating what I'm going to be doing is plugging in this x particular x value of 0. So we have 3e to the 3 times 0. What I have is 3 times e to the 0. Anything to the 0 power is just 1 so we're going to get 3. Alright, so that was 1 part A. 
All right, now number 11. I kind of had to set myself up for 11 because it's going to be somewhat of a doozy because we're going to be taking our old rules in the past and applying it. What you can see here is I have the product rule is necessary because I have this function times this function right here. Both functions are going to be in respect to e, or I'm sorry, with respect to x. So what I've done is I've separated them out. Okay, so f of x is equal to x plus 1, that's my first function, and then g of x, my second function, is equal to e to the 3x. So what's going to have to happen is I need this rule right here. And I can tell you I have identified a couple of those. Um, I do know that f of x is my first function, I have that. Okay, and then I also have my g of x my g of x I'm going to also need. But I also need to find out what is the derivative of g of x and I also need to figure out what is the derivative of f of x. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. We have f prime of x also notated as d dx of f of x, so the derivative of f of x. Um, this one's pretty simple. We just take it piece by piece. So it's going to be the derivative of x would just be 1. And once again if you need to review those rules do it. The derivative of 1 or some sort of constant is just going to be 0. It drops out. So here is the derivative of f of x. So I actually have now this piece. All right, And then I'm going to have to find out what is the derivative here. So here I am going to have to take in to account that this is the rule that I'm going to be using. Um, so in order to derive g of x, so find d, the derivative of g of x with respect to x, that's what this notation is saying, what I have to do is I'd have to take this as my inner function and then I'd be saying that this is e to the u, so e to the leave that inner function alone, derive with respect to u that outer function, here's my outer function derived with, my, with respect to my inner function, leaving that inner function alone, but then I have to go back and derive that inner function and multiply it. So what I have is 3 e to the 3x. 3 times e to the 3x. Um, so here, this is a piece I need, and that's going to go in right here. So what I need to do in order to find the derivative of this function that happens to be a combination of two functions being multiplied, so here is my h of x. Alright, um, here's my h of x. So the derivative the derivative of h of x, I'm going to need to be taking my original f of x, all right, times, then I'm going to have to take the derivative of the g of x, which I determined having to use this rule right here, okay, and then plus, I would have to take now, here is that derivative of my first function, which I found to be just 1 and then times the derivative of my second function. I'm sorry, and then times my second function just left alone as indicated by this product rule. All right, so now you are going to want to simplify this out a bit if you can. So if you ever see, you're always going to get this common e to the x, um, e to the some sort of u function. If you can pull those out, pull those out. So we have h prime of x is equal to I'm going to pull out my e to the 3x, and then what I have left here is 3 times x plus 1, all right, plus 1, okay. So once again, I pulled this out and pulled this out. What I had left was this piece, and what I had left was 1. So um, if you distributed that back in, you'd get this very same thing. So now h prime of x is equal to e to the 3x times, and then 3x plus 3, because I'm going to distribute that, plus 1, and then all of this is equal to e to the 3x times 3x plus 4. Okay, if you so chose, you could um, say, I don't, I don't really mind. If you want to distribute that back in, um, you can. It would be 3x e to the 3x plus 4 e to the 3x. However, I think this right here is the answer that would be in the back of the book. All right, in the next video, what we're going to be looking over is how you integrate an exponential base e.